if you want to find out how we just closed a 128 unit property for 69,000 a door that appraised for just under 16 million big ones, you better listen up. Hello, everybody. This is Jake Sons, now host of Jake and Gino Podcast. with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, chef, the father, six, best-selling author, the G-Daddy. Gino Barbo, Gino, how's it going? You're back to the pink, brother. I love it. You're looking great. How you doing? Salmon, baby. It's salmon. Always making it happen, big man. You know that. Come on. I always mess up the salmon and the pink. I, you're always thinking about food. I'm thinking about colors. It's okay. A little locks. Hey, uh, really excited about this one, Gino. We closed 128 units, and we're basically going to just give away the farm. We're sharing the details with the folks, and uh, man. Seller financing, 2005 vintage, all the good stuff, all the buy right criteria. Um, man, market's changing. Market cycles, it's a real thing and uh, it has a huge impact. So what are your takes on this? Jake, before we go into the great stuff and how awesome we are, because I, I know you're awesome. I'm still trying to figure myself well, dude, out. You, you got the Skull Bunny shirt on, or is it the Psycho Bunny? I don't know what it is. I got the Psycho Bunny the because Psycho of bunny. you, my friend. You showed <laughs> it, looks good on you. it looks good on you. You showed him on a podcast one day. I'm like, what's he wearing? What is that? I got to get myself. And four shirts later, I'm like, love me some Psycho Bunny out there. It was on talking. <laughs> now it's Psycho Bunny. But I'm going to take everybody back on a little journey. And when I met Jake back in 2009, I wasn't wearing Psycho Bunny. I was wearing shirt I don't coats. think it was a thing yet. <laughs> I felt like a Psycho Bunny, but I wasn't a Psycho Bunny. And I'm in the kitchen hanging out, you know, cooking. I'm on the grill. I'm throwing some chicken on there. I'm sauteing some zucchini, broccoli, little hot cherry peppers and garlic and oil. And in walks Mr. Stenzi out in the kitchen with my brother. And my brother's jumping around, having fun. And I'm like, you, you F. I'm <laughs> back here sweating my balls off and you're having fun. Who's this guy? And he's like, this is Jake. He's one of the pharmaceutical reps that, you know, we're having a dinner for these doctors and, you know, want, to, want you to meet him. I'm like, bro, what's going on? I was pissed. I was hot. And I'm like, this is this Jake, Jake Stenziano. This is Jake's chicken that I'm making right here. This is Jake. I'm like, bro, I don't have Gino's ch par chicken parm on there. Your but name was Jake's on the sign, dude. <laughs> Yeah, but you got a dish named after yourself, bro. And I'm like, that's not, that is it was, not It was fair. the healthiest dish in the house too. So, you know, <laughs> what, 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 what do you know about that? Huh? Well, a little, a little tidbit for everybody out there. Jake likes the little tortellini carbonara with the bacon in there. You got a little heavy cream. Mixed with Parmesan the chicky parm cheese. though. It's a combo meal. All right. No one talks about that. It's a surf and turf Italian style. All right. So he went from Mediterranean delight to like heart attack heaven over there. So in one fell swoop, but I'm, I'm cooking. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we get into this, I want you to detail for people what Jake's chicken is. It was a very popular dish at the time because I, I think it's it'll add value to folks' life. Before we get into the deal, folks, we're not going too long here. No, absolutely. And this is important because part of what I think what the Jake and Gino brand is, it's about family and it's about being healthy. It's about being responsible. Jake's chicken, basically, you get some chicken cutlets, you flatten them out. You put them on the grill. We put some nice spices, nice seasoning on them. We put a little bit of parsley, a little bit of paprika. Paprika's got a nice little, nice little bite to it, nice coloring on it. I would put some salt and pepper. You want to put some olive oil? You can marinate that all if you want. Then when you put it on there, you put the dry spices right on top. And then, then you flip it over on the grill. You cook it both sides. On the side, you've got a nice saute pan there. You got some nice sliced garlic, some nice olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. You're sauteing that up. You throw in some zucchini. Let them cook up a little bit. You throw in some peppers. Let that start cooking what up a little peppers? bit. Well, we use hot cherry peppers. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, baby. And, and That's what made it right there. That's what made the dish. And if you don't like hot cherry peppers, don't use them. If you like really no, if you hot. don't like it, don't eat the dish. All right, because it makes it. <laughs> no, don't go. Don't go screwing this up. All right. <laughs> and, 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 so you got zucchini. You got hot cherry little peppers peas. in there. Yeah. You got little peas in there. If you want. You could throw some mushrooms if you want. I'm not saying you have to, but Ooh. you get the colors. You want the reds and the greens. And you really saute that down. You throw a little bit of salt in there, a little bit of pepper. You crack that pepper up in there. What I would do personally, I'd get a little flake of butter. You need a little butter. You need a little, mm. you need a little Richness. fat in there. It's That's the emulsification. Right. It just covers the lips and your, your tongue. And you're like, mm, this is heaven. And then what you do, you let that cook down really nice. You saute that. If you want to put a touch of chicken stock in there, just to get a little bit more of a liquidy broth in there, let that cook down. Once those vegetables are cooked, between 8 to 10 minutes, shut it off. Get your chicken. Plate the chicken. You throw those vegetables right on top of there, baby. You send it out. What I would do, chop up some parsley. 
throw some parsley at the end, you get that smell, and bam, Jake's chicken. Award-winning dish. Now we're going to get to an award-winning partnership. Hey, we had to do that, (laughs) folks. Sorry for the long intro, but that's the important stuff right there. And once I met Jake, didn't really kick it off with him for a few months. Just Dude, you, were, you were angry. You were like an angry uh, chef in the back. Yeah, with the, the arms crossed and like the chest out. Like, well, this was me. I mean, yeah. it's 2009. Business is slow. Yeah, I'm not making money. I got my brother jumping around in the front, hanging out, drinking wine with doctors <laughs> and Jake. And I'm in the back washing dishes and I'm cooking Jake's chicken and I'm not making money. And I'm working on Mondays when I'm supposed to be off, sending out doctor's orders to Jake's offices. I'm like, something's not adding up here. And we hang out next couple of years. We get to know each other a little bit more. And then in 2011, Jake's like, I am moving uh, down to Knoxville, Tennessee. And I'm like, Jake, where's Knoxville? <laughs> He's like, it's in Tennessee. I'm like, well, let me whip out the. You're, you're like Nashville? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let me whip out the laptop. Start looking at deals. Because Jake and I just started conversing a little about multifamily. Because Jake was on LoopNet. This- on LoopNet, of course. Yeah. Right? He, Jake was trying to do this CrossFit thing. I don't know what the hell. He's trying to build a machine or some crap like that. And I'm like, dude, multifamily. And he's like, you know what? I can do anything other than pedal drugs to doctors. So what you got for me? We whip it out, looking on LoopNet. And I'm like, dude. 30 a door, 500 bucks in rents. Let's go. LFG, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then he moves down. He leaves me. Because by that time, two years later, I actually grew an I left you, but I created us. All right. <laughs> what was great about it was, you know, the, for, for, for all of you out there looking for a partner, what I loved about Jake more than anything, he was prepared. He always came to work. He was always hungry. He never made any excuses. He he would come in with a sheet every week, knowing where all these doctors' off offices we had to deliver. Still to. got it. That's right, baby. And when you moved, I'm like, get down there, settle, get your four hundred dollar a month apartment, try to figure things out. I you know you're going by yourself. Your fiance is up in New York, and he was a miserable prick for for the first few months. We we're trying to get deals, and it doesn't work. And then his fiance decides to move down, and then what happens? They got to buy a house. I'm like, bro, seriously, multifamily. You're killing your baby money soldiers. He didn't know what a baby money soldier was. A lot of rejection up to that point. We got rejected (laughs) on a lot of deals, though. I mean, I got kicked out of brokers' offices. People telling us, y'all are never going to do business down here. It was a rough start, and it took 18 months before we got any traction. And I had a little mentorship. I had a little education. I just wasn't in the in the business. And Jake had the salesman mentality. Like, you got to do business with me. I. You have to sell me when in reality, Jake should have been selling them on why to work with Jake and Gino. But 18 It's not months. buying used cars, right? I think that's, and that's probably one of the first inflection points is that you're the salesperson to the brokers. You're the salesperson to the banks. You need to convey credibility as to why you're the guy to get it done. And I had it flipped at that point. And when we did close that first deal, it took us 18 long painful months i remember being in the basement of my house in new york walking around and going are we getting back are we back dude we have to start looking again because jake had bought the house he got some seed money and the reason why he moved to knoxville was it was so affordable he was able to continue to save money and after 18 months we found uh the ricky g amazing broker we got seller financing on that very first deal very similar to what's going on right now and after that first deal three months later we got our second deal but for those of you out there that are getting into the business or starting to get into the business or haven't closed a deal in the last couple of years remember it's just a microcosm of what your entire life looks like if you're 38 years old or 40 years old you've got another 20 to 25 years of investing if you haven't bought a deal in the last year stick with it they're coming back brokers are actually calling us back they're actually cold calling us they're They're being proactive versus sitting on their heels and allowing everything to come in this is this is the big shift from last year from 2021 to 2022 brokers could send out a deal online everybody sees it they're getting 20 offers and they're you know going through which highest price okay give me a best and final and raise your price it was it was a very different time now interest rates are up brokers are sending deals out but the rates are unattractive and there's demand plummeting it's changed completely basically overnight as the rates have gone up so we are in a different environment and i believe it lends itself to much more opportunity for value add investors if you like to binge watch on YouTube, go to our channel, Jake and Gino, start binge watching how to's. We talk about the market cycles. We talk about what's going on with interest rates. Why are prices plunging? Well, 
Well, maybe syndicators are having a tougher time raising capital. Maybe the capital is drying up. The cost of capital is going up. You're going to learn that all on the Jake and Gino how to. And it's, it's really simple, Gino. It's two things. Rates have gone up. Okay. It's got investors skittish and there's less money flowing to syndicators. It's a reduction in capital. It's harder to get capital and rates are up. It's very simple. I mean, it's, it's pretty black and white. So we're going from Jake's chicken all the way to my, my basement in New York to closing this first deal. And what we noticed on that very first deal was it was a mom and pop seller. Hmm. And we realized at that point we had not created it yet. The three pillars of real estate market cycle, where were we were buying in the market cycle exit strategy. we really didn't have one. We got lucky. We bought a good asset in a good market with great numbers and the debt component. We had seller financing on that deal. Now let's fast forward to this deal. We just know, Gino, Gino, hold on. You're forgetting the, one of the major components here. We also created our avatar and our avatar is the mom and pop seller. This is where Gino and I have literally created all of our wealth by identifying the type of motivated sellers that are going to provide opportunities for you to add value to deals and create a ton of wealth because they're not operators. So our niche is operating at a high level and identifying mom and pop operators who are burned out that are going to provide opportunities for us to turn around their property. So that was one of the huge ahas before buy right, manage right, and finance right. And then Jake is sitting down one day, he's cutting grass, just chainsaw, he's out in the yard and he sees the wheelbarrow. And he's like, wow, three-step framework. Will of our profits was born. Buy right, manage right, and finance right. And this deal, the first deal we did is very similar to the deal we, we've done. We've done just a lot bigger last week. <laughs> it, it, exactly. But you know, for those for those of you out there that are saying, I, I can't do 128 units, you don't have to do 128 units on your first deal. We did a 25 unit on our on our very first deal. Then it went to a 36 unit, then 136 units, then back down to 22 units. We've even closed in a 12 unit last year. 12 unit. Everyone's saying, oh, that's small. Well, that 12 unit property is going to print cash for us. We're going to be able to refile that money out and put it into the next deal. It's not the size of the deal that matters to us, really. It's the quality of the mm. deal. And it hits our buy right criteria. And that's what we started formulating when we created Jake and Gino. What are you looking for? Buy right, manage right, and finance right. Let's talk about the buy right on this deal, Jake, for the 120 units. And I want people, as we're talking about this deal, start formulating what kind of deals you want to look at and what your buy right criteria is for your market. That's a great point, Gino, because we have certain criteria that we look for, and it may be different from yours, and that's okay. But the, the key component is to have the criteria that's going to allow you to be swift and execute deals quickly, allow the brokers to know what you're looking for so you're not wasting people's time. And it's really a good thing to say no to a deal. If a deal comes across your desk and you can quickly identify that this is not an opportunity for you, that's actually a win. So for us, this deal is very simple. It was 69,000 per door. Okay. Now that could mean a lot of things, but the key to it is that it's a 2005 build. So it's a newer vintage. So that price is starting to look really good. In addition to that, it has an 80 K median income. So it's a very affluent area. So low crime, people making good money. They're able to pay for the apartment units. Say that again, uh, $80,000 mm -hmm. of median income in the surrounding area. In and the we track, teach, yes. We teach the students at Jake and Gino how to look for that. And also it wasn't in a flood zone. If it's in a flood zone, just make sure that you're, you, right. you understand that and you need to pay more for flood insurance. So when you're going out there, we typically look for 50,000. So when we saw 80,000, it's like, okay, check oh, that it box. It just, it's, just, it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah, check that box. It's right next door to a property we already own. So from a management perspective, phenomenal. Okay. It appraised for just under 16 million. So a huge, huge amount of equity from day one. And why do you think uh, it did that, Jake? Why do you think it appraised for that much money? Because that's what that's where the market is, you know. I mean, it's it's the build, it's it's all the buy right stuff that we're talking about, though. It's it's the vintage, it's the quality of the construction, it's the median income, it's all those components that go into the appraisal that make it really, you know, a, a super valuable asset. We're also going in and we're doing a loan to cost deal. We're going to put a million dollars upgrading the interiors because we think we have such a long runway to go from where uh, rents currently are in the seventy eight hundred dollar range. We know because next door we're renting for eleven hundred. So it's it's a it's a you know a huge huge opportunity there, um, so you know we're really really excited about this because it checks all the boxes uh, from a buy perspective that we're looking for and and one of the really cool things with this deal is that 
we are always looking to learn things. We don't know everything. We actually picked up an additional insurance carrier from this deal that has you know saved us already forty thousand dollars on some of our other projects that were more expensive. So one of the keys when you're buying these deals, folks, is to also look for vendor partners. We also picked up a new lawn care company because one of the things is you know when it comes to painters, when it comes to lawn care, if you have a larger portfolio, you can't really give the whole portfolio to one group because sometimes you get overwhelmed because it's actually too much business and and they can't expand or scale as quickly as you may be be able to. So we so really about pops, good vendors. Just say they're about in pops as well. Landscapers, absolutely, gutter companies. You know. Yes, it, and yes, I agree with you 100 on that. Jay, can I go back to the market cycle because when we look at this yeah. deal back in 2013, that very first deal we bought, would we buy that today? And the question is, it depends. Yep. The price point we bought it back then, I would buy that today five times over. We had a very similar deal to what that deal we bought our very first deal come across our desk last week. It was at 77000 per unit. Now that seems like it's a, a good deal. But when you look at all the CapEx, you look at the age of the asset, you look at the work that needs to get done, 77 becomes 97 really quick. And yes. is, it, is it a bargain at 97? And remember, if your exit strategy is to hold a deal for the next 20 or 30 years, well, how is that asset going to age out? Not very good. This deal, we'd be willing to pay a little bit more because if we hold it for another 10 or 15 years, it's still relatively new. That's the difference. So understanding where you are in the market cycle will help you formulate your buy right criteria. And now as you start shifting, older assets are going to become more attractive because of one reason. It's the price. Once those cap rates start going up on those older assets, they become less What's the word? They would become less desirable to the average mm -hmm. investor. Like, I'm not going to buy an old asset at this price. And the bank's going to require me to put all this money aside for CapEx. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to buy these newer assets. So these older assets, these prices are going to drop. So be careful with your buy right criteria. Understand right now that these older assets, prices are going down. And if you're going to pay 80 a door for a C property and 90 a door for a B property, I'd go for the newer asset if everything else is equal. And much like that first property, this came with seller financing. The key here is it came with seller financing. The first deal, this was not something we pushed for. This is not something that we we're chomping on cigars and pounding on the table demanding. This was an opportunity for the seller. It was an opportunity for us, the buyer. Much like this opportunity, the seller did not want to take that huge tax burden right out of the gates. So they wanted to do a component of seller financing. So $450,000 of our down payment was brought to the table by the seller in the form of seller financing. So that's another huge advantage. We call that a kicker. We call that a bonus. Okay. That's, that's, that's a part of finance, way. right? That is that's part, part of, of finance, finance right? right? Absolutely. And so you're saying, well, the, the rates are elevated right now. Well, guess what? We bought this loan to cost, essentially a community bank bridge loan that we, we base, we say internally, we're going to, we're going to knock this out over the next 12 to 24 months. We're going to turn every unit they're going to be pristine. The rents are going to go up to eleven to $1,200 a month. It's comprised of mostly two bedrooms. We love that. That's another component of our buy right criteria. It also has some ones. It also has some threes. So hopefully, you know, right around the time of the next presidential election, what do we typically see? Interest rates dip. If we're in the mid fours, we'll be refined at that point. And we're currently at 6%. Hopefully we're pushing down to four and a half at that point. Maybe not be the case, but it cash flows already. So we do not have to worry about that. Let's talk about the finance component because on our very first deal, we got a fifty thousand. Uh, it was a sixty thousand dollar note, ten percent mm -hmm. uh, owner financing. We still have that note. We're still paying that $329 note. Three hundred and twenty nine dollars every month going out the door when I'm doing payables. I still see it to this day. Yeah. Think about how much mm -hmm. that asset that note is depreciated. Sixty thousand dollars ten years ago was a lot of scuttle. <laughs> you can't even buy a freaking Hyundai for sixty thousand bucks now. <laughs> so can you imagine the power of seller financing? And listen, if you are the seller and, and you your note is at prices six or seven percent, you've been making pretty good money over the last 10, 11 years. What would you have done with that money? They probably would have put that money in the bank and they would have pissed that money away. Instead, they got 350 bucks a month coming in. So it works really well for both sides. And I think on this deal, the seller wanted to save some taxes. So he's like, you know what? I don't need all my money. If I get it all, the wife's going to go out. She's going to go party. Let's keep it. Let's keep half a million bucks, 450 in a note. I'll be getting some money every month. And then when we go to refinance this deal, we'll refi him out, put it on one big loan, probably cash out more than what we put down and continue the party. Absolutely. And, you know, so this deal is just, a, it's a great example of 
we've been working with these folks for 10 years. I met them when we closed the deal 10 years ago and they knew we were credible. They knew we could close and they're older. And now they're saying, Hey, I don't want to ride through another recession with this asset. So it's time for us to exit. We were there. We're ready to go. And this is a power of creating your brand. If people know you're a closer, that you show them in your local community that how you operate and that you get things done, deals are going to come to you, but you need to be patient and you need to continue to prospect. So here's the three areas where you're going to see deals from. You're going to see your broker deals come through. You're going to see, hopefully you have a direct to seller campaign that you work directly with owners. And then also your local presence in the market is going to create opportunities. Maybe it's your pest control guy gives you a lead. Maybe it's the flooring company. These relationships matter and you have to nurture them over time because this is how you're going to get these types of opportunities off market. Jake, let me talk about the spy tech real, real quick. Sure. Uh, what what I'd love to do is anyone listening to this right now, if you want to reach out to me, Gino at jakeandgino.com, I'd love to give you a copy of our creative cash because it talks about seller financing, master lease options, and it talks about the spy technique and the three pillars of real estate. So if you're really looking to really get educated on what's going to happen in the next 18 to 24 months and take action on these strategies, because remember, the bigger and more full your toolbox is with all these strategies, the more success you're going to have. For us, with the spy technique, it worked so well. Because I think as buyers, we think that everyone is looking for the top value. Most people are reaching out to me saying, why would they take only that for the asset? Remember, the asset is only generating about an average of $700 per month. So the value today, he may have gotten another $10,000 per unit, maybe another five or six or $700,000 on the open market. But we listen to them. You know, the spy technique is SPY. It's seller, property, and then why is you? What is the seller's pain points? How can we derive and bring value to the seller? Well, number one, the seller didn't want to disclose that he was selling this property. He wanted to keep it quiet. Number two, he didn't want to be bothered with going down to the property, opening up every door, showing it, marketing it, having 30 people look at his property. He wanted certainty of close. He wasn't looking for the highest price. He just wanted to say, put it on my docket. Let me get rid of it. And I'm done. That's we made all it extremely easy for them. And, yep, and, and that's and the value that, that we brought. Exactly. Yep. And then the property is the, the P, is your buy right criteria. Does that fit Jake and Gino's buy right criteria of that deal? And this deal absolutely did. And then why is you? You're the last person. Does it fit your criteria? And also, what are you going to do to, to really close this deal? So when you're looking at a deal, you're always thinking about, number one, what's your exit strategy? Because whenever you buy a deal, you don't make money by buying real estate. You do early on with a little bit of cash flow, but you make money on the exit. And we're going to make a ton of money when we refi this deal. So what is your exit strategy on this deal? We know we're really clear about it. I want you to think about it as you're underwriting every single deal. And then the next component is when you're negotiating the deal, use the spy technique. Figure out what the other side wants. It's not always the highest price. They may want somebody local to the market. They may want you to use a certain vendor. They may want you to keep somebody on the team. Uh, they may just like you. They may build rapport with you. They may trust you. Whatever that is, find out how you can provide value to them. And then ultimately, does it fit your buy right criteria? 100%. Here's the thing. We're going to be doing property tours at this location. We have boot camps in our Knoxville market with our property management team. If you guys want to learn more or you know get on site with us, hit the GDAT up. Gino at jakeandgino.com. We'll put you in touch with the team. And maybe we can set something up. Uh, about to close this out. But Gino gave me the finger. Gino, what do you have, sir? And that's the other thing, Jake, go on Jake and Gene Instagram, follow us on Instagram as well. We've got tons of pictures on the deal. I know you all want to see what the before and what after looks like. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to know what kind of you know fixtures we're using, 20 year flooring. What does it look like? How long? It's really going to be a story within a story on Instagram and on our Facebook page. And hit me up on LinkedIn as well, Gino Barbara. Make sure that we're all connected on these social medias because if you want to learn to see how to buy an asset, how to actually finance it properly, how to manage it and cash those big checks, you can find everything on our social media pages. Yeah, we're taking you through the process. So it's all documented. And gang, as always, we believe in buying deals for the long term. Think in decades. I'm Jake. He's the G-Daddy. We make it happen. We'll see you next time.